you really want to become a product manager. However, you're very busy with your current job and you also have family obligations that may keep you busy. At the same time, the overwhelming information on the internet, you don't know where to focus. What if I tell you that it is very possible you can land two product manager offers within three weeks, even if you are six months pregnant. In this video, my student Somia is gonna share with you her top secret This is Dr. Nancy Lee, a product manager accelerator from drnancy.com. I help people transition from worker bee to product manager and business leader. If you want to learn the most effective way to become product manager, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so be notified every time I post a new video every Wednesday. Today, I had such a great pleasure to have Somia with us. And I'm so, so, so like excited waiting to talk to her because she actually landed two product manager offers within three weeks while being six months pregnant. All right, Somia, all the world is waiting to hear your advice. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Somia, like Dr. Nancy mentioned. Um, I recently took a job at Development Seed as a product owner. Um, but prior to that, I within three weeks, I had about 10 companies that I was actively interviewing with, and I ended up managing getting two offers within that time span. Um, it was a wonderful experience, and I never thought that I would be able to do that. When I started my job search, uh, I was getting a lot of interview opportunities to be an analyst, and I knew that that wasn't a journey that was right for me, and I really wanted to be a product manager. Mm -hmm. So I was part of this program, and I really learned that, you know, there are ways, there are strategies to make it happen. And behold, it actually did. And I landed my job in less than three weeks. Awesome. How exciting. Awesome. So, Somia, I love how you tell us you had challenges when you, when you start looking for jobs and can only get business analyst type of jobs. And can you tell us how exactly did you become a product manager starting from a business analyst? eventually become a product manager within three weeks. That's actually like very, very impressive. So tell us uh, what's your journey to product? Yeah, I would say um, my role prior to this one was as an analyst. So of course, you know, I, just the way how LinkedIn and other job algorithms work, they try to tend to give you opportunities that are similar in titles and such. Yeah. Um, that was one of the key reasons. But one of the primary things that I learned was the language itself. I wasn't using a lot of uh, product management languages or keywords, but I was using a lot of analytics focused language. And I didn't realize that at first. However, it was such a big struggle at, uh, when, you know, back in July, I kept trying, I was applying, I was trying for referrals and whatnot, but none of which worked. I kept getting a lot of referrals that went back to an analyst role. You, either the, the referral itself would uh, suggest that or the recruiter would say, you know what, you might be a better fit for an analyst role. And I knew that that wasn't the right thing for me. Oh, that's so. really bad. I, I, will, I, I think it's hurting confidence, especially really want to do it. Actually, this happened to me as well. Um, when I was an engineer, actually, I got a PhD uh, when I started my career years ago. I don't guess how old I am. Uh, and and then people always said, when I write, want to transition into product management, people say, oh, ba like it's just like, Nancy, maybe it's better you stay with your lane because you got a PhD in engineer. Oh, yeah, everybody asked me to do just say, do what you're supposed to do. But I know my heart is calling to do something different. So tell us more, what did you do afterwards? Yeah, uh, I would say the very first thing I needed to do was, uh, you know, really, I wanted to network and connect with people who were in the space, observe their language. Uh, that was something that I kind of caught on to that, you know, I was probably using a different speak than what it's supposed to be. And mm -hmm. soon I learned about all these different programs that I might want to be part of. Um, and that's how I landed on your program. I saw your program through the YouTube channel itself. Um, so shout out to that. <laughs> uh, but I did see that, you know, this was probably the best fit for me of everything that I saw, at least. Um, and I knew that within seven 
weeks or seven modules that we have, I was going to get a lot in that short time span. And, you know, one other challenge which you kind of touched upon was me being pregnant. So yeah. I knew that I didn't have a ton of time personally either. And not just that, it's also, I didn't want to join a job and immediately go on maternity leave for a while. <laughs> I wanted to make an impression, uh, you know, add some value to the company and, and then maybe go on vacation or, well, it's not vacation, right? <laughs> uh, on maternity leave. So, so I knew that, uh, you know, I had to act fast. So I joined the program and I think it was the perfect pace for me. So I joined in August and August and uh, midway through September, I finished the course. And that's when I knew, okay, these are the things I need to work on. And I focused on those challenges and I reworked my resume, which is, you know, again, is part of the program itself. Um, I knew how to speak to people which was very different from how I used to speak. So mm -hmm. I could see the difference itself myself. Um, and then all the different exercises that we did through the programs, the product sense questions, those were very new to me. Like I could see a lot of those questions online. Yes, but how do you answer it in a guided framework, in a structured way, in a concise way? That was completely different. So as I did that, bang on, I started getting those interviews right away. <laughs> That's awesome. So can you give us a quick example, a sneak peek regarding how you change a language? For example, you said before you were talking about experience in A, now you use a program learning different way to talk about experience and all of a sudden you get interviewed. Just give us a quick example, like before and after. Yeah, uh, I'll try my best. <laughs> Uh, but I would say that back in the day, my keywords used to be all like consulted, analyzed. I used this data and this is the, these are the steps I took rather than product, which is very focused on the output. So, yeah. you know, you focus on the value, you focus on a uh, roadmap. So you're planning, you don't just say plan, you say more of more in terms of the roadmap itself. You talk about prioritization, you talk about strategy. Those were things that really called out to me. Those were the reasons why I really wanted to be a product manager. But for some reason, I was not using them in my language itself. I see. So, uh, so I knew that that's where I needed to improve on. And the program was helpful where, you know, everything we spoke was kind of along the same lines. And I keep em emphasizing on the language itself, but there's more to it, of course. There's the practicality of it. Uh, the way you think about product in terms of customers. Um, back in the day, I used to focus on the process rather than, you know, the end outcome or the primary customer needs. So exactly. when I shifted my directions towards those things, I felt like the whole world changed for me. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now let's talk about how the whole world changed to you within three weeks. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so can you share with us how you make it so fast? Let's focus on efficiency. I, my, I also recently had a baby. I totally understand, not just, hey, I get job fast, is we do not have time, right? With new babies coming up. I know you're you're actually at the time six months pregnant. Now is all oh, your baby is almost out. Uh, we don't have that much time in the world and also have full-time jobs. Tell us how would you make it so fast and so efficiently and manage your time? One thing I did was as I did the program, I just wanted to focus on that. Um, I thought I'll just pause my job search for that span. Yes, if I had any inbound interviews or something, that's a different thing. But that wasn't my priority. And, you know, as a product manager, everything we do is, you know, ruthlessly prioritize everything. Uh, kind of set a, a wild roadmap and then prioritize everything through that. So for me, this was a product portfolio <laughs> in a way. So uh, finding a job while I was working full time um, and learning the program itself and at the same time managing my pregnancy and just my overall personal life. So it was a lot of different things that I had to juggle through. But um, and I think the biggest struggle was switching between those things. And that took on a lot of energy, um, especially being pregnant. I felt like I would doze off anytime. <laughs> so <laughs> so that was definitely something I knew that these were some of the challenges I needed to work with. Of course, more things came up as we went. But um, one, thing, uh, one thing I did was prioritize, right? So yeah. I knew that my current job was important. And I was very thankful that I was working at that point. But I knew that that I couldn't be there 
long term. So I knew that I could only focus on it enough. So I tried to manage my schedules between my current job and my job search itself. Those were the two things or the two buckets I did during the day. And in the evening, I focused on learning, preparing, networking, that kind of thing, manage that with you know, my personal life itself. So those were the major buckets I focused on. But um, my primary thing was, you know, if I want a job, I need to act right now. Um, once I'm further in my pregnancy, I know it would be harder to get a job or it wasn't right for me, at least. I know people can do it and, you know, kudos to them, but it wasn't right for me. So I knew that I had to act super fast. So yeah. I, I would effectively uh, not entertain opportunities that I felt weren't right for me. That was the first thing I did. I so one of the key things I did was uh, reflect on what did what was important for me. Is it just another job that had that PM title or is it something beyond that? So mm-hmm. for me, the strategy, the mission values of a company really matter. Yeah. So I knew that I wanted to focus on that. And, uh, you know, with that, so every single company that I encountered with, whether through referrals, whether through inbound LinkedIn opportunities or just job, uh, you know, job portals and whatnot, I would always go back to the company itself, try to find how they function, um, their maturity with product management, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And then I would see, can I see myself working there five years from now? You know, of course, things change. I don't know if I'll work for five years in the company, but do I see myself doing that right now? Or is it already an adjustment? So if I felt like it wasn't right, and I did the same exercise after every single interview as well. So once I felt like it wasn't right, I would just say that, hey, you know what, this is not going to work out. And I would essentially drop that particular opportunity. Wow. That way I knew that I had to focus on fewer things. The other thing was scheduling interviews more strategically so that at fewer days to take off from work, And focus just on the interviews itself. And again, I didn't have to do a lot of task switching between, you know, being an actual employee and focusing on my company needs versus thinking of myself as a job seeker, as a potential product manager. Yeah. So switching between those two, switching between an analyst and product manager was huge. And I didn't, I tried to minimize that as much as I could. Yeah, especially you mentioned you need to train yourself to be in the shoes and zone of product managers when you talk to them, right? And now that one day you're like, or an hour ago, you're doing business analysts and all of a sudden switch PM. So it's very hard. It's very smart. So you just line up all the interviews closer to each other throughout the day and you're in the zone. I'm a PM, I'm PM, PM. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. And I would say that uh, through the course itself, uh, we had a lot of, basic questions that are typically asked and that kind of thing and also other questions and some of the things that I learned that may not even be directly in the question in the question answers itself um, I just caught up on few things that were relevant to me or resonated with me I would jot those things down in my um, in my notepad and then I would say you know what how do I add that to my answers you know when people ask me questions Uh, another key thing was Uh, I know the program really focuses on not making it an interview where it's like the interviewer asks you a question, then you answer it, but instead make it more conversational. Yes. So I think that was very helpful. Uh, Practicing through all of that was helpful. Even some of the recorded, uh, you know, past sessions or recorded sessions that we had, I tried to watch them whenever I had any free time. Instead of watching Netflix, I tried to focus on that. So uh, because it was only three weeks, I I know that I didn't go too crazy (laughs) with those. But yeah, between the seven weeks of the actual modules itself and the three weeks that I did my interviews, uh, I think I learned a lot. And between those four buckets, I knew I could manage those. That's awesome. Very impressive. I totally love your idea of like the scheduling interviews and shifting the mindset. And actually somebody uh, brought this up. This theory is like um, it takes a lot of uh, fuel for airplane to take off. And then once it's towards the cruising phase, it takes very little fuel, same as how our brain is working. So that's why we like to batch all the tasks together, but I also like you how you batch all the 
interviews together and, and also quick learning from oh, just people asking me this question. So let me redo it and make a conversation to the next one. That's how you just boom, 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 and the now the, the interviews and getting offers. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. So also uh, remind me this. You mentioned that you actually rejected some uh in companies on purpose. Not mm -hmm. they reject you, you reject them. That takes yeah. lots of balls, lots of like like uh, uh, um, uh, confidence to do it. And yeah. tell us um, how you make that decision and what the reactions when you reject them. And are you afraid once you reject them, you may not just lend anything? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. I would say I was very clear with my goals this time, at least. I was privileged where I did not need to get a job within this time or you know i'll be deported or anything like that i've been in that in the past in yeah, that situation like on H1B, so, we have yeah we have exactly laid off on H1B. that that's very scary yes exactly so thankfully i was not in that position i was working and things like that mm -hmm. so i knew that that wasn't a factor uh, but at the same time one, that was one of the key reasons that motivated me to reject them <laughs> where i felt like you know what if i don't do well in this job or what if I just don't feel like doing my best in this job um, they might end up laying me off or things like that it might just yeah. not work and what if I end up in a position where I don't have another job offer lined up and I have to find a new job within 30 days or then I have to leave <laughs> which was huge for me that was one of the key factors but uh, additionally I also felt it's very important for me to align with their mission with their values I know it's not the same for everyone but that was important for me so I knew that if I don't do that I'll end up back in the job search uh, process again in six months which I hate at this point I would admit <laughs> I want my my goal was to find a job where I can potentially be there for years and years at least um, and not have to think about another uh, job application or things like that <laughs> in the in the near future at least right so that was my primary goal I knew that uh, it wasn't just to find a job in the product space mm -hmm. uh, so that's where it was a struggle at first, but uh, every single after every single interview with any company, I would ask myself, do I still see myself working with them? How did this wow. interview go? Things like that. Now, between those, I would admit there were some companies where I was like, you know, let's see how things go. I wasn't absolutely sure if I wanted to reject them yet. There mm -hmm. were companies where I knew that, you know what, this won't fit. Of course, there were companies who rejected me based on the same criteria, right? So yeah. I thought if companies have that leverage, I think we should too. So I took that ownership uh, and and I would say it took a lot of confidence and I would admit that in the past, I've not done that. <laughs> I wish I did, but um, I had that confidence this time. I knew that if not this month, maybe two months in, I might find a job or worst case after the baby comes, right? So. So I knew that that was the way I wanted to pursue this, but uh, I would say, I would admit that I was not 100% scared. I had a small fear in the back of my mind where I thought, what if I don't land it in the right time, right? This was the timeline I set for myself, which was two months. And admittedly, I did it much faster than I thought I would. <laughs> so yeah. I'm really glad that happened. But at the same time, I thought, you know, this is a realistic timeline and I have enough interviews with enough great companies to know that I should be able to work through one of those at least. That's very powerful. I like your very powerful statement in, in terms of the company has the power to select us. We should have the same equal amount of power to select them as well. I also believe that that they can see that in you as well. So like your, your companies, um, who whoever aligned with the mission, and maybe the one of the reasons they just love you making offers so quickly. That's amazing. I love this. Awesome. <laughs> so let's do this. Um, we talk about how fast you get offers. Let's let's now the specific what specific strategies you can give others so that they can land the PM job quickly like you. Right. I would say the very first step is that you focus on the company itself, whether it's one or 50 companies, doesn't matter. Focus on the company, the mission, the values and the products that they have. Really know what they are about. Um, the second thing is know your job description very well. Be thorough with it. See what's you know, the number one, two, three things that they've asked in the job description itself. Focus on those as you answer those questions. Uh, the third thing is try to know the people around it. If you can network, 
you know, if it's through a referral, even then try to network with more people, uh, try to understand what, how their role fits in with the company, things like that. Ask a lot of questions, have informational interviews if you can, if you have the time. Uh, if not, just research online. That's the most important thing. Four, I would say, which is very important, write down your answers, practice it. If you can practice with a partner, that's very huge. Again, shout out to the program because we did a lot of mock interviews. We did one-on-ones between my peers. So that was helpful. People are from different levels, but you can still gauge what they get out of your answers because you yourself might think, oh, my answers are just perfect. Or you might think my answers are really not good, but someone else can give you that perspective and preferably someone who's not you know, within your family or friend circle, but someone who doesn't necessarily know you. So yeah. that's always a great way to do it. And five, really prioritize across companies. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, I also uh, love to check in regarding the mock interview process, right? Um, so how many mock interviews have you done, by the way, through the program with your peers? Especially we talk about the efficiency, which is we, we highly focus on how can you use much less time than others really get the result, right? So how many mock interviews have you have you done with your classmates? Yeah, I would say uh, uh, I did a few of the casual mock-ups that were part of the office hours. So that would be about six or seven of those. But again, I was just answering one or two questions through the entire thing. Um, but I also did one, I, I just had enough time for one uh, mock interview with one of my peers. And I was, the funny thing was I was just about to schedule two more with people and I was just I talking off. to them. Uh, they were all excited to do mocks with me. And even before that happened, I managed this, so I knew that I didn't have to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very fast. Awesome. That's impressive. So you did us through the office hours mock interview, six or seven mock interview. Then you only did one was mm -hmm. your peer. And then you land off before you even do other mock interviews. Yes. That's amazing. That's very and impressive. I wanted to do more, uh, but my time schedule was just so crazy. It was either it did not work or I did not have enough energy to just do it with others. This is awesome. I felt I learned so much today, by the way. When you share your advice to the alumni channel, I took screenshot of what you wrote. That's, That's amazing. Thank you so much. All right. So one last question. What do you wish to know before you become a product manager? We know you already started your new job. You choose this one over the other one. So now you're a real PM, not an analyst anymore. Tell us more. Um, what, what do you wish to know before becoming a PM? Yeah, I would say uh, there's a lot of confusion around what a product manager is. So mm -hmm. it's important that you do your research to find out what it means for you and what it means in general and what it might mean for a particular company. So yeah. funny thing is my previous role, they call it kind of a product manager role but it is fully an analyst role. So, I you know, see. I wish I knew that before, before I took on that role. Um, but yes, that's, that's the primary thing. So in my mind, a product manager, like I said, is focused on the strategy and the strategy execution itself and all the way to development and releasing it into the market. Mm -hmm. So that's my perception of what a product management role is. It may not be the same for every single uh, company. There are companies that only focus on, you know, the product managers only focus on strategy. There are companies where you focus on the execution. So it's important to know and gauge all of that through your research, through your interview process, all of those things. Um, additionally, I would also say it's important to learn the language. So if you can network, if you can, you know, join a program like the PM Accelerator or, you know, but I would also uh, say that I would caution that try not to go through multiple programs, focus on one particular, dedicate yourself through that, because we, again, don't even have too much time, any of us really. So focus mm -hmm. on that um, and, you know, think of yourself as a product also, you know, you need to essentially sell yourself. So find ways to build that towards your customers. <laughs> That's awesome. I love how you apply the product management principles to your life as well. You do this again and again. That's amazing. <laughs> That's you awesome. know, we can't practice enough. So I thought that's the best way to practice. <laughs> 
Very awesome. So I, I, you actually mentioned that you look through other programs and only decide to take one program, which is our program. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell, tell us more why you choose this one? And to be honest with you guys, this is not rehearsed. I didn't even know this will come up. Tell me more. You compare other programs. Why, why did, did you decide to take ours? Yeah, I, I would say that um, I've been through a lot of different YouTube channels. One of my primary ways to gauge the different uh, programs has been through YouTube. I really liked that yours was very contextual, where it's not just about, you know, it's not only interview focused. There are so many different things. It talks about the journey. Uh, it was easier for me to connect with the people that uh, you were bringing on your channel, things like that. Um, additionally, as I did the workshop, the free workshop that you had, mm -hmm. I learned that, you know, it's a fairly shorter cohort. So, and it was a decently short program. It wasn't too short, plus the emphasis on case studies and yeah. practical uh, exercises rather than just interviews and things like that. So it was a good blend for everything that I was looking for. And knowing that many of the people in the program itself were more, you know, like me, that was helpful. Um, plus, I also felt it was a short, I mean, the cohort was small enough where, you know, you can connect with every single person in the yeah. program itself. But at the same time, you have a really large alumni base. And when I say really large, it's subjective, right? So mm -hmm. it was a good size for me. So between all of that, uh, it was just right for me. And I also resonated with your journey through, you know, being an engineer all the way to how you became a product manager and all of those things. And like I said, back in one of the questions, I, I want to align to the mission and the values. So some of the missions mm -hmm. and values that you speak about, you know, like uh, spreading education, you know, or educating people, things like that, that was huge for me. So I thought this was far better than some of the other programs that I saw. Thank you so much for telling me that, yes, the educational uh, mission will we do together. And I'm glad this is uh, the mission for lots of our students who feel the same way as well. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Awesome. Absolutely. OK, great. So, Somia, um, one last question. And how will people get in touch with you if they have any uh, questions um, from today's interview? Yes, you mentioned the program. For anybody who's interested in the program, feel free to click the link down below and learn more about the product manager accelerator. Yeah, uh, the best way to reach me would be LinkedIn. I would put a small caution there that if you just send me a request, I may not respond. I prefer when people just send me an introductory message or something as you try to connect with me. So yeah, it doesn't have to be an in, in mail, but just do an introductory statement on what we're trying to achieve through this network and then we're good to go. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, this is also what we teach people in the program. When you reach yeah. out people on LinkedIn, please just do some like bland requests and you have to customize your messages. Um, thank you so much. You're actually teaching us so much today. <laughs> thank you so much. It's so valuable. Okay. So, all right, everybody, I, I hope this interview is super, super informative and awful, very insightful for all of you guys to transition into product management and land your dream job as well. Thank you very much for joining us. And thank you, Somia. I'm looking forward to see all of you guys next time. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.